Welcome to uh, the review session for uh, City Planning, January 6, 2014. Jackie? Good afternoon, everyone, and once again, uh, Happy New Year. Today is Monday, January 6, 2014, and a quorum is present. The first item, item number one, involves a proposed urban development action area project designation, project approval, and disposition of city-owned property to facilitate 51 units of affordable housing and community facility space along West 153rd Street in Manhattan. Now, presenters. Good afternoon, commissioners, and Happy New Year. Uh, this is a HPD application seeking a UDAP designation, project approval, and disposition of two city-owned properties to facilitate the development of a new seven-story mixed-use building that will contain both residential and community facility uses in Manhattan Community District 10. The proposed project site is located on West 153rd Street between McCombs Place and Frederick Douglass Boulevard and is located within the R72 zoning district. Um, the site, the project site is comprised of two city-owned lots, which are lots 55 and 57, and a portion of a privately owned lot, which is lot one. Lots 55 and 57 were previously approved, I mean, were approved for disposition in 2004 to, by the commission. However, the proposed daycare center that was there didn't take place because of funding issues, so those lots remain city-owned. Lots, portion of lot, portion of lot one, which is part of the development site, is currently a story that is operated by HCCI, which is Harlem Congressions for Community Improvement, um, and it's a workforce development program that provides job counseling um, for their targeted population. Um, also, HCCI also controls this portion of lot one. Um, building. Um, the site is our, is in our R7 district, which is the medium dis district that is regulated by height factor. Um, the maximum residential FAR is 3.44, and the maximum com community facility FAR is 6.5. Um, this is kind of a walk around the block. We have the Harlem River houses to the east um, of the site. <laughs> Uh, directly in front of the site, you have residential um, development. This is the site here. It's, it's small, but it's, it's currently vacant. These are lots 55 and 57. And then the portion of lot one that is uh, improved with the HCI here. Um, this is the residential development. Um, to the corner of the you have the hotel, um, which you see the back end of it. Um, the entry rate to that hotel is from the place. Motel. Hotel, motel. <laughs> it be a holiday. Um, I have no personal knowledge. I just know the area. <laughs> HPD is seeking a UTAP designation and project approval and the disposition of two city owned properties to facilitate this new mixed use building that will have both residential and community facility uses. Um, it will be built pursuant to the quality housing program standards. Um, it will have a base height of 60 feet and then after a 15 foot setback um, rise to a total height of 69.4 uh, feet. Um, the building is proposed to have about 50 approximately 51 affordable units um, that will all be affordable at 60 percent of the AMI. Um, along West 153rd Street, uh, for ACC's offices, um, the daycare center entrance, and the <coughs> entrance, there will also be parking that will be accessible along West 153rd Street as well. This development will not affect uh, the existing development on Lot 1. It's just this portion of Lot 1 that's along West 153rd Street that will be affected. The current community facility will be demolished and housed in the new uh, building. So on the, this is showing the three uh, entryways for the community facility, the daycare center, and the residential 
um, entryway and then parking along West 153rd Street. This is the back south elevation of the building. So just to take a look on the first floor plans, um, most of that space will be dedicated to ACCI's office space. There'll be um, just a daycare lobby uh, entry will be on the ground floor and the residential lobby will be on the ground floor and most of the space will be dedicated to ACCI. On the second floor, there will be some space that will be dedicated to ACCI's office, but majority of that space will be dedicated to the proposed daycare center and there will also be open space that will be accessible through the second floor. Um, the proposed development will contain 4,815 square feet of community facility space as shown by the diagrams on the ground floor um, and an additional 11,438 square feet of community facility space that will be located on the second floor um, divided between ECCI and the daycare center. Um, there will be additional 1,088 square feet of recreational space that will be accessible to the second floor that will be dedicated just to the daycare center. Um, and there will be additional open space for the residents that will be accessible through the seventh floor of the building. They're proposing 18 parking spaces pursuant to zoning, which will be accessible through West 100th Street. Okay, thank you, Calvin. Questions? Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, considering the uh, history of the lots previously yes. and, and, and that the lack of funding seemed to be the demise of the previous plans. Um, so has the funding actually been secured um, for both the community facility build-out and also for the residential portion? I'm hoping, I mean, I, I believe so. It's being funded through the low-income low income housing, housing tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, the construction is being funded by the, the state. Uh, HPD's funding is just based on the position of these two city-owned um, lots. So. Uh, I can, you know, further discuss that with HPD and just see how far along the funding. I know that they were trying to meet a deadline. That's why they were trying to push it through because there's uh, deadlines for those states. Uh, subsidies. It's due February 5th. Yes. On December 5th. Oh, okay. And is there a temporary location for the community facility space? Do you know? No, I'll, I will check on that. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Angela. I don't want to give you the false impression that I'm a biker because I'm not, but I thought all of the new developments had to have some bike parking. Um, there is some bike parking. You know, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to it's not in the briefing package either, so it's that's... not. Let me, let me check. We don't want to, you know, um, go over the bikers. I would definitely find out and Thank make you. sure you're Thank provided you. with that information. Other questions? No. Thank you, Calvin, for your presentation. Can you just talk a little bit about the average size of the uh, of the uh, units? The average size, the I don't. Uh, for the residential. I don't have portion. that 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 information, but usually with quality, um, the quality housing program, there's a you know certain standard mm -hmm. for one bedrooms, yeah. uh, studios, and so forth. But I can also you know get more information about the unit count and what those uh, sizes will be. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? No further questions. This is certified. Thank you. Thanks, Calvin. Let's now move to item number two, page 28. It's a Queen's pre-hearing application with respect to a proposed zoning map amendment to rezone an R32 and an R32C12 to an R5DC13 to facilitate a four-story mixed-use building along Union Turnpike. This is uh, item number two, page 28. In Good afternoon. This application, which was filed by Zurich Union Turnpike and certified on September 23rd, is an application to rezone a portion of one block located at the intersection of Union Turnpike and Parsons Boulevard in Kew Gardens Hills, Queens Community District 8. This rezoning would facilitate the development of a four-story commercial and residential building of approximately 68,850 square feet with 39 dwelling units. 
Rezoning area consists of four tax lots. <coughs> lot 21, upon which the proposed structure will sit. This is gray parcel here. Also lot 22, as well as two lots in front of Parsons Boulevard. Lot 21 is currently vacant, and lot 22 currently houses a five-story inpatient alcohol and substance abuse treatment facility, which was formerly Gen Hillcrest General Hospital. Remaining two lots front on Parsons Boulevard and are not controlled by the applicant. The buildings on these lots include a fast food restaurant and a three-story mixed-use building with approximately 6,500 square feet of retail and eight dwelling units. East of the project area, the block is developed with detached single and two-family residences, a two-story commercial building, and a vacant automotive service station. The applicant proposes three changes with this application. The elimination of the existing C12 district, the establishment of a 540 feet deep C13 district, and the expansion of an R5D district to an area bounded by Parsons Boulevard, 79th Avenue, and a line 540 feet east of Parsons Boulevard. This would increase the maximum allowable FAR from 0 0.6 to 2.0 and broaden the range of permitted uses to include those in local in use group six, which are local retail and service uses. The proposed rezoning would also set a maximum building height of 40 feet compared to the current 35 foot maximum and extend the existing R5D C13 district that was established in 2006 south of Union Turnpike as part of the Hillcrest Jamaica Hill rezoning. As I said, this application was certified on September 23rd. The community board held a public hearing on October 22nd and voted November 13th by vote of 17 in favor, 14 opposed, and zero abstaining. The borough president then held a public hearing on November 14th and has since recommended approval. Thank you, Stephen. Questions? Angela. I remember when we certified this, and I remember that we talked about the fact that all the uh, housing units would be market rate. That's correct. I'm not sure why 14 people oppose this, but that's what I'm really curious about. Why, why so close a vote? Certainly. At the community board's public hearing, they raised concerns on the, the area itself as well as the development. So we were first concerned that the, uh, the upzoning would allow a, an unnecessary increase in infrastructure, particularly traffic concerns. And the applicant... Um, hired a, a traffic consultant and, and found that the increase in traffic would, at peak hours, result in a net trip increase of 40 trips per hour, which is less than one trip per minute at any intersection. The board was also concerned um, with development in the R5D, just, just along Union Turnpike, that was part of the 2006 city sponsor rezoning, and that uh, possibly Department of Buildings has not allowed the proper scale development that they thought would happen. <coughs> they were concerned that any upzoning at all would, would allow development that they were not familiar with. And others were just concerned that the increase of 35 foot tall building maximum to a 40 foot tall was too much. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, the, the applicants uh, addressed these concerns and produced 92 letters of support from the community. And so at the end of the day, the, the community board voted in favor. As did the borough president, right? As yeah. did the borough president. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for Stephen? This is on uh, for public hearing on Wednesday. So you'll have an opportunity to uh, drill down mm -hmm. if you wish. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Let's, out, let's now move to item number three, page 46, a Brooklyn non ular pre-hearing with respect to the East River Ferry text amendment, which would uh, amend docking capacity, parking, and drop-off pickup requirements and select zoning districts and community district one Brooklyn to support thanks, the continuation of uh, East River Ferry service. So that's item number three, page 46. Our presenter is Chris. Just give us a moment while we uh, prepare for the
Good afternoon, Commissioners. On October 21st, 2013, the City Planning Commission referred the East River Ferry Tax Amendment beginning the public review process. In 2011, the applicant, the New York City Economic Development Corporation, began a pilot program to establish East River Ferry Service between Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Over the duration of the pilot program, the East River Ferry has experienced considerable success and has exceeded projected ridership totals by nearly 50%. To meet this additional demand, EDC sought a zoning override from the mayor in 2012 to permit ferries with capacities larger than that permitted under zoning at certain ferry landing locations, namely the three Brooklyn Land the three Brooklyn landings shown on this map. If you recall, in residence districts, uh, there is currently no mechanism to allow docks for ferries with a capacity exceeding 150 passengers, thus necessitating the override for the pilot. This zoning override will expire in 2016, and the pilot will end in spring 2014. In order to ensure continued operation into the future, EDC is proposing a non-discretionary chairperson certification process that will allow vessels with a capacity of 399 passengers to dock in R6 through R10 residence districts, as well as commercial districts and manufacturing districts as of right. The proposed certification will only apply in areas where the zoning override was applicable for ferry landings along the Brooklyn Waterfront and Community District 1. The proposed certification also would waive parking and drop off pickup requirements since most users walk or bike to the ferry landing and would require that applicants meet site design standards. All of the existing ferry landings covered by this proposal are either already located within or are anticipated to be located within a <coughs> waterfront public access area. These public areas are typically required through zoning along the waterfront in conjunction with upland development and have robust requirements to facilitate the safe and enjoyable public use of the waterfront including amenities like planting, seating, lighting, bike parking, trash receptacles, guardrails, wayfinding signage, and ample space for pedestrian circulation. Since ferry landings will typically overlay onto this framework, it is critical that ferry usage can interact harmoniously with these public areas so that waterfront open areas and amenities are not overwhelmed by ferry users. As part of the proposed certification, applicants would need to delineate space on the site plan for additional ferry amenities, including passenger queuing areas, bicycle parking, and trash receptacles. These would need to be in addition to those required for waterfront public access areas, and the site plan would need to demonstrate that the location of these amenities would not impede pedestrian connections to the shore public walkway and other circulation paths in the waterfront public access area. The certification would also establish design standards for passenger queuing shelters and ticketing machines where they're provided to ensure that visual connections to and through the waterfront open spaces are maintained. On December 10, 2013, Community Board 1 voted in support of the application by a vote of 27 in favor, 1 opposed, and no abstentions, subject to the following conditions. 1. The zoning text will mandate illuminated shelters within 100 feet of the boat docks and two, the zoning amendment will mandate an upgrade in and around the docking areas of any lighting that does not meet the city's current safety standards for areas of public usage. The Brooklyn Borough President recommends approval of the zoning text amendment subject to the following conditions. One, that docking facilities with its queuing areas and gangways be governed by the lighting standards of ZR section 62-653 public access design reference standards for lighting and two, the signage indicating ferry schedules and routes shall also incorporate <coughs> contact information to the entity responsible for site maintenance. For instance, snow and waste removal, physical repairs, etc. In addition, the borough president recommended that one, the applicant for certification prior to filing such docking facility applications should take steps to consult with the entity responsible for the upland area in proximity to the gangway to achieve a passenger queuing shelter pursuant to proposed text ZR section 62-813. Two, the Department of City Planning, pending the outcome of subsequent analysis undertaken by the Economic Development Corporation regarding bike usage, should consider if it is warranted to proceed with the zoning text amendment to increase the minimum bike rack parking space requirement to be in more in line with observed usage and if warranted, require plans filed for the requested certification to note location of docking facility bike racks and routes of bicycles from the street to the bike rack and gangway. Three, the Department of Parks and Recreation in regards to the area upland of the gangway at Schaefer Landing 
should take action to seek upgrading of the lighting along such passageways between the gangway and Kent Avenue, consistent with the lighting standards of ZR Section 62-653, Public Access Design Reference Standards for Lighting. And finally, four, the Chairperson of the City Planning Commission, when considering application for certification of docking facilities for ferries or water taxis in waterfront areas at Community District 1, should make recommendation to the Department of Transportation where it deems it appropriate for the following. A, the installation of a bus shelter at a specific bus stop in proximity to the ferry docking facility, and B, installation of bike share stations at specific locations that would be complementary to ferry docking facilities. Is that it? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Questions for Christopher? Michelle. Um, thanks for the summary. Did did Community Board 2 in Brooklyn and the Community Board in Queens just choose not to comment on this? Uh, this actually is only applicable in Community District 1 in Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. Well, that answers that. Other questions? Anna. Sure, and I would also mention that I um, it attached, I think, last Friday, I sent a memo to you guys uh, regarding this issue mm -hmm. um, because, you, because you did ask, ask it at the um, referral date. And I, it, I just wanted to note that the underlying um, waterfront public access regulations do have significant maintenance requirements, so many of these will be part of that you know, regulatory framework. Um, and because of that, they require, you know, public access signage that has, you know, please call 311 if you have any issues. And I would also mention um, that the current operation up at, on their schedule and ticketing information has a number at the bottom um, that if you have any problems, please call this number. Um, sure. Sure. Other questions? Okay, this too is on for a public hearing on Wednesday. Thanks, Chris. Let's now move to item number four, page 86, a Bronx pre-hearing application with respect to the disposition of city-owned property in community district six in the Bronx. And our presenter is Paul. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Happy New Year. Uh, this item is back for pre-hearing review. This is an application by the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. They are seeking general disposition approval pursuant to zoning uh, for two properties located in Bronx Community District 6. Uh, they intend, DCAS does intend, intend to dispose of the properties. However, there are, while there are no facilitated projects associated with either property disposition, the approval will allow the city to dispose of each property in the future. Uh, there are two lots in question. Uh, the first is a 22 uh, 2,200 square foot lot uh, located on Bathgate Avenue between 3rd Avenue and East 187th Street. Uh, this was this site was acquired by the city in <coughs> 1943 and was assigned to the Department of Sanitation, uh, and they use it as a uh, section slash comfort station up until 2006. And has been that this particular property has been vacant since that time. The other property in question is a 27 square foot lot, um, which the city received <coughs> through the NREM uh, tax foreclosure process. Uh, the community board held a public hearing on this item and on November 13th voted 19 in favor, zero opposed, and zero abstaining to approve these applications. The borough president held a public hearing on this item, <coughs> on these items on December 23rd 
and voted to approve the application, but they did have one request, and the request was that Lot 27 uh, be <coughs> uh, offered to the adjacent property owner, which is, you can see it a little bit here, 770 Grove Street. Uh, DCAS has indicated that they have a program in place called the Sail Away Program, which actually uh, <coughs> allows for the facilitation of these small sliver lots to be sold to the adjacent property owners. And they will be here on Wednesday to answer any other questions and give more detail on the Sail Away Program. Okay, I think it's fairly straightforward. Uh, any questions? Okay, it's on for public hearing. Wednesday. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Commissioner, your day has been considerably shortened. The next item, item number five, the Times Square major concession proposal has been withdrawn. Mm. Uh, let's now go to the votes for January the 8th. We have the proposed uh, Bergen Saratoga Apartments, uh, which is a UDAP disposition to facilitate 80 units of affordable housing in Ocean Hill, Brownsville, and Brooklyn. We have the Ponton Avenue City Map Amendment to remove uh, cloud from property owned property in the Bronx. We have the 1775 Grand Concourse office space proposal that will uh, facilitate the acquisition of use of property for the law department. We have the 31-0047th Avenue office space proposal, which is a proposed acquisition of use of property by the Taxi and Limousine Commission and the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. We have the proposed North Conduit Avenue rezoning and city map amendment to rezone, to rezone property R32 and R3A to a C42 district to facilitate a hotel use uh, in the South Ozone Park neighborhood of Queens. We have a proposed certification to subdivide one zoning lot into two zoning lots to facilitate six units of housing in the special South Richmond Development District along Amboy Avenue. We have the proposed certification from two zoning lots into three zoning lots within the special South Richmond Development District along Edge Grove Avenue. And we have a proposed certification to subdivide from one to two zoning lots within the Special South Richmond Development District along Wilson Avenue. And then on January the 22nd, uh, staff will be preparing a, um, for your favorable consideration, uh, the proposed Urban Development Action Area Project designation and disposition of property to facilitate the redevelopment and maintenance of accessory uh, pedestrian uh, entrance area at 57-21 Rockaway Beach Boulevard in Arbor and Queens. And I, right. Okay. That's all I have. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Wednesday is uh, pretty short, right? Relatively short. Yeah. I think uh, certainly, uh, hopefully by noon or before then, the day should be. Okay. Well, no further business. See you Wednesday. I like you. Thank you. <laughs> Carol Lee, approach the bench. So somehow, and I, I generally check all my emails always, she had sent me a text saying, uh, I can't believe they sold the line. So I bought there because I didn't send an email. I'm, anyway, I'm going to move it now. Oh, they are? Oh, my goodness. And you think they'd...